What up, brothers and sisters? Uh, what's up, people? I want to tell y'all a very, 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 very sad story. It's a very sad story. It could have been one of the greatest stories, one of the greatest sagas in history. Right? But it's a sad, sad story, you know. It's a sad story because of what I want to talk about. I want to talk about respect and disrespect. This is going to hurt. This story is going to hurt. Yes, it is. It's going to hurt. Because this has a lot to do with the things that people don't want to talk about and the things that people don't want to hear. People don't like talking about things that hurt. The only thing that hurts is the truth. All of my life, every moment of it, have led me to the point after 50 years of living, breathing, walking, talking, eating, spending money, a penny, two pennies, ten pennies. I remember as a child where I could take ten pennies, twenty pennies, and walk to the store and walk out with enough candy to last me all day. Twenty-five pennies. Fifty pennies, right? And I've spent dimes, nickels, quarters, hundreds, thousands of them. Perhaps even millions of them, right? <clears throat> I've spent, that's at 50 years old, and I should have at 50 years old, right? I've spent hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. Would you believe that I have spent several hundreds of thousands of dollars at 50 years old. And I should have. I probably should have spent a couple hundred million, right? But surely, at 50 years old, I have spent probably a couple million dollars. I can count up every dime, every penny that I've ever had. And if I was to save it, every car, every house, every expensive garment that I have spent money on, that I have accumulated and amassed, I would say I would be worth a few million, at least four. Easily. Easily. And it's all accounted for because the government accounts for it, right? They give you receipts for everything that you buy, right? Every car that you ever bought, America got record of it, right? Whether they took it from you, whether you sold it, whether it just stopped working, whether you sold it to the junkyard, right? Whether you gave it to a family member or sold it to a friend, right? And then you go get you another one and the cycle happens over and over and over and over and over again. I have walked in every shoe 
for miles, including sandals. flip-flops to Jordans. I have driven in every type of vehicle from a goat car. I'm talking about the kind that we made as kids. I'm talking about my whole life to actually owning my own Benz, Cadillac, several trucks, yeah. So many cars, I can't even begin to count. Right? How many properties that my name is registered and affixed to? But yet and still, there's people that will affix in their mind that you ain't shit. I, as a single parent, raised child, mother, right, daddy, out of all my brothers, that's my brother to the to the, to the light skin guy I'm hugging on. The other guy, that's Chris, right. So, my mother, none of the men that she had children lived in her home. None of them can say that they had really lived there or had the right or the... None of the men felt like men in my mama's house because my mama ran her house. And she refused to let any man, including her children's father, run her home. Because that's the type of woman she was, right? But we talk about respect. This woman have raised both of us, single, single. I started rapping, playing drums at an early age in my life. Right. For real. I started playing drums at an early age in my life. That was probably one of my first talents, right? I really, really liked drums. And, I, and two things I liked early. I liked, I liked listening and talking about God, and I liked music. Those were two things that captivated me, God and music. And somehow, being that I was born in a very, 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 very Pentecostal family, you know, when well, the family wasn't even Pentecostal, the, the leader of the family, which was a, the, my grandmother, who was not religious at all, converted to the Pentecostal religion. While all her kids were pretty much at a time when all her kids was grown. So the way that my grandmother had raised my mother and all of her brothers and sisters was a way that my, you know, my grandmother found religion much later in her life. So my mother wasn't raised religiously. My, my, my I was grown already. I was like, this is like 1979, 1977, excuse me, that religion was introduced to my grandmother. Mind you that my grandmother's children was all born in the 50s and 60s. So when my grandmother was grown and her children were grown, she was introduced to the Pentecostal religion. And she was introduced to it by one of her sons. One that was used and abused by this wicked world, one that was strung out on dope and drugs, right? My Uncle Thomas Goldberg. My Uncle Thomas Goldberg was strung out on drugs since he was like 15 years old, right? We're going to get it in today, y'all. Push this like button and subscribe, right? And you got this woman who done raised six kids, probably had like seven or eight. Two of them died early, right? 
Those are five, six. And whatever way it go, push it through. There's no God. There's no religion. There's just black people born behind the goddamn a ball. Right? Things just going bad all the way around. You know, ain't these people don't know nothing but the streets and thug them. We talk about the 50s, 60s, and 70s, y'all. Push this fucking like button, share, and subscribe. So, my grandmother's second oldest son, Thomas Henry Goldberg, named after my grandfather, Thomas Henry Whitfield, right? 13, 14 years old, strung out on goddamn heroin. Running around in the 60s, off the riverside of Jefferson, Kitchen area. 14, 13, 14, 15 years old, sniffing and shooting up goddamn heroin. Right? My oldest Uncle Butch, I don't know why, it's Kevin, Kevin Gover. I don't know why he was named after, why he wasn't named after my Uncle Thomas Whitfield Henry Jr., you see? That's why I don't understand, but whatever it was, it was what it was. My Uncle Butch was the oldest, but my Uncle Butch was spoiled. He was spoiled by my grandmother. He was spoiled by my grandfather. And he was spoiled most and foremost by my grandfather's mother. My grandfather, Thomas Whitfield, his name was Whitfield because his mother was Goldie Whitfield, right? So we talk about great-grandma Goldie, right? Great Grandma Goldie spoiled Butch. When, when Butch was born, she called Uncle Butch. Jeez. Great Grandma Goldie worshipped Butch because that was her her son, Thomas Whitfield, Thomas Henry Whitfield, right? That was. My grandfather, Thomas Whitfield, oldest son, right? So, if we get on to the story, right? We're talking about us born behind the eight ball here. You got this woman happen to take care of these children, right? Because my grandfather, Thomas Whitfield, he had married Jacqueline Whitfield, right? And so you know what happens. The first family lose. My grandfather taking care of Tommy, Jackie, David. They're my uncles, and I love them dearly. But I'm just painting this picture out, y'all. How we born behind the eight bar, right? So my Uncle Thomas... Which is Bino, you have Butch, which is the oldest, then Bino, Thomas, Thomas Henry, Goldberg, right? Because my grandfather didn't get married to my grandmother until my uncle Ricky was born, which was come next. You got Butch, Bino, Ricky. Bam. Right? When Ricky was born, my grandfather finally married my mother. So Ricky, so Butch and Bino is Kevin Gober and Thomas Henry Gober, which it should have been Kevin Whitfield and Thomas Henry Whitfield, right? But they weren't married, so it's really whatever. So they get married, and here goes my Uncle Ricky, Ricardo Whitfield, right? I'm telling the story. I'll tell you the real truth. Push this like, share, and subscribe. Right? We born behind the A-bar, right? Then you got my mother, Right? Then my grandmother had another daughter by the name of Lisa, right? And then she had another son, right? 
by the name of Eric, right? Now, there's about two or three more children that died as babies. Barbara and my Uncle Butch had a twin. Uh, that's something else. That's a whole nother story now. Because I want to get this thing done and out the way. Now, growing up without a man in the house, and you got my grandma raising my Uncle Butch, and you know, right? Butch was an evil, evil guy. And I'm just going to just flat out say it. Everybody know it. The family was scared of him and shit, right? Drunk nigga. You know what I'm saying? Get drunk and just act a fucking fool. Clown ass nigga, right? And everybody was scared of him. You know what I'm saying? Because he will push that motherfucking blade. He also will push them buttons when it comes to shooting, right? Butch was a dangerous dude, right? Butch and Bino used to fight. And my mama used to fight, right? And they all were dangerous people. My mother would hit her brothers and upside the head with shit. You know, I'm talking about skillets, sticks, all this crazy, uh, iron, phone, whatever, right? My uncle Butch had a hatred streak for his brother Bino so bad that I, in around 1970, I would say late, well, 74, I would say, I would say sometime in early, mid 74, I could have been maybe about almost two. Between the first two years of my life, I seen my uncle Butch bust my uncle in the head, crack his head, Bino with a hammer, right? I seen with my own eyes, because this shit would happen in the house, right? Before I was two years old, I seen my uncle Butch stab his brother Bino in the motherfucker heart, right? I also seen a lot of jealousy, I seen a lot of hatred. Right? I seen a lot of motherfuckers wanting to dominate other motherfuckers rather than trying to dominate they self. Right? That's what I seen. My Uncle Bino ended up getting saved, right? In 1977. Out of Pentecostal Church. It was right there on the corner. I think it was somewhere like Moran and Forest. Today is an Israelite church all over in that area right now. Spiritual Israel in this army, though. No, I think it's the Israel of God. And it was the Israel of God way back then. But fast forward to, that's a sacred. Now, that's key. Now, my uncles knew a fight like dogs. They were them to kill each other. I'm talking about that shit that them people, in fact, my uncle Bush actually killed my Uncle Bino, when he stabbed him in his heart. And he died on that hospital bed for a minute. And my uncle got shot. Back in the late 70s, Bino survived drugs, people killing him, hating him. And it was all, most of all of this happened at a time when he was contemplating in his life about wanting to follow God. Now that my Uncle Butch was the type of guy that would get drunk and shit, right? He would get drunk, and when, when, when Butch got drunk, he's the type of guy that everybody be like, oh, shit, time to go. Because they know that he finna fuck up the party. You know, uh, my uncle walked around where he got his left hand cut off because he was drunk and wanted to enter into the party. You know, and one of the family friends didn't want him into the party because he would get drunk and act a fool. So he called himself wanting to kick the motherfucking dough in and shit, right? You know, and as he kicked the dough in and he stuck his hand through the dough, you know what I'm saying? And that and Sweetie's little daddy 
chopped his motherfucking hand off. And my uncle walked around with a chopped off motherfucking hand. But he still would stab you and shoot you because he will push that motherfucking blade. And he will push that motherfucking butt. I know that because my uncle has shot several people, right? My uncle stabbed several people, right? He, he almost killed his own baby brother, the one that was right under him, two times. That's how I was raised, man. I hated it. And the only people that was able to escape that type of bullshit and craziness was my Uncle Bino, the one that was getting stabbed, the one that was on the dope, the one that was getting his head bust by his own family. Nobody showed my uncle the hatred that his big brother showed him, that his brother showed him. My uncle used to abuse my, used to, my, my uncle didn't even live with my grandma because my uncle was poor. Bush didn't live with my grandma. He was poor. Right? So Butch would have to go live with Goldie because Goldie called him Black Jesus. Bush did what he wanted to do. Butch told me all kinds of stories of how him and his boys used to get down in the streets. And we talking about niggas that's like 13, 14, 17, 18, 16 years old. And I'm like, wow, y'all used to get it like that way back then, man? You know? My uncle was, he was a street nigga. You know, my uncle Butch kind of was a nigga like Goldie off the who, off who's the Mac. He was kind of like Goldie off, a mixture of Goldie off Who's the Mac and uh, Gregory Hines in that movie when, when Forrest Whitaker was his, his, his older brother, a nigga who left the family to go out in the street and hang with the fags and the, the, the dope pushers and all that other street garbage shit. That's the type of nigga my Uncle Bush was. And he left the family, right? So there's no daddy there, the firstborn gone, because he didn't want to respect my grandma. Because my grandma did not worship her son. But his grandma did. So he chose his grandma over his mama, right? Because my grandma wouldn't put up with Butch's bullshit, right? So Butch would be gone over there on the north end in Detroit, right? And he would, you know, come back over there and then try to sit in on this big brother type seat shit, right? And anybody to say anything or do anything. You know, I remember Butcher just walk up to my mama. My mama got stories where Butcher just walk up to her and she say something and Butcher just slap the shit out of her. And then she'd turn around and pick up something and bust him upside his goddamn head with it, right? This is the type, you know, but he didn't have that right to really do that. Because as an elder, he should have dealt with things more intelligently instead of trying to just demo shit. These are people that was, these were the ancestors, children, that was uh, people that was getting beat with whips and hung from trees who had no love and compassion. They didn't know this shit. Right? You didn't read no Bibles. Again, the only one that brought religion to my family was Uncle Bino, Thomas Henry Goldberg. He got saved, right? He ain't so intimidated from his house, he would have to sleep in bandit houses and shit because he didn't want to have to kill his brother. But his brother had no problem with, 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 with showing everybody in his life that he would take Bino out of here. And then after the fight was over with, everybody wanted to get along, be alone, so everybody kissed Butch ass, so Butch should have had his ass locked up for busting my uncle in the head. But I mean, this is my family I'm talking about. Nigga, I don't fuck who like it, who don't. I was there, nigga. I shouldn't have to think that shit. Right? When he stabbed Bino in the heart, and when he bust Bino in the head, Butch should have had his ass locked up in the penitentiary somewhere. 
I don't give a fuck whether Bino forgave him or not. Bush should have paid for that. Because you just can't walk around here doing shit like that to people and thinking that you should be forgiven for that. If you live by the sword, you should die by the sword. If you're around here sticking motherfuckers, then you should get stuck back. You shouldn't be, there's no reason why you should not get stuck when you out here sticking people. Sorry. Life don't work like that. To make a long story short, right? To make a long story short, I'm 25 minutes in, we'll go about an hour and a half, hopefully. To make a long story short, that's how I was raised, right? Well, what do these guys in this picture got to do with anything? We're talking about my family, right? My family, my bloodline, my people, right? African Americans. How we was raised fucked up. And don't nobody seem to appear to want to get this motherfucking shit right. Right? So, and we fast forward on to the story, right? Let me make sure I got this thing going right. Push the like, share, and fucking subscribe, people. This is exclusive. Right? This some old alpha male red pill shit right here. You know, Israelite shit, red pill shit too, though. So, through this life, I become, you know, my mother, my mother births me, and as a kid, I get, and, and, you know, they give, she give me things that kids get, you know. First, you buy race car tracks and cap guns and some type of projectile shooting shit or all, all kind of crazy shit, you know. Uh, you get all these shit as early toys coming into this game. That's what I did, right? I had an interest towards music, so my mother bought me a drum set. I had to be about six. Little Muppet show, I think, but drum set and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I used to bang around and tap on it. You know, a little toy kit. It wasn't a real drum set, right? And I grew older and shit. And I liked music. I always played drums. My grandma took me to church now because she no longer was in that wicked world. She left the mentality of the wicked world and gave her mentality to God. The only God and the best God that she knew. Right. And it was in the Pentecostal church and they taught separatism, you know, sanctification, where the people of God live a totally separate ideology and way of life from this Gentile world and society. Right. And she introduced that. So I had this great zeal for music and, and religion early because those were two two of the key elements that were very, very prominent in the Pentecostal church, the God idea and music. The Pentecostal church has produced the greatest musicians in the world, from Thomas Whitfield to Billy Preston. I'm trying to tell you. You know, uh, I mean, to... I could just name them. You know, the greatest, the Winans, you know, the Clarks, Vanessa Bill Armstrong, right? You know, Thomas Whitfield was my uncle. That was my grandfather's other son by Jackie in it, right? Uh, the guy to the left, that's Chris. That's Chris Brooks. He's the drummer, right? I'm going to show y'all who Chris Brooks is. Hold up, y'all. Show y'all. Chris, Chris is the drummer. He is the nephew uh, 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 Mike Brooks, who was the hold on, y'all. Yeah, I feel for you and all of the things. Now, this right here was about Fred Hammond. Fred Hammond. Uh, 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 Thomas Whitfield, the Clark sisters. This show here was recorded by WDIV, right? People, uh, my brother sit up there and tell me, Willie Whitfield, the guy to the left, he mad at me because he said, I'm talking bullshit. I'm talking about nothing. Things that are not fucking real, right? 
things that are not real, right? So I was in the Pentecostal world or church world, right? Growing up. Yeah. We got to the piano. Let down the piano. And all of the things. That guy back there on the piano, that's Mike Brooks, right? Now that's the uncle to the guy that's sitting to the or that's standing to the right of me. Right? On this photo right here. Right? That's Chris Brooks, right? Chris is a formidable drummer. All of us were drummers. I played for Oscar Hayes. Mook played for this, this 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 one particular church. He never really had no real gigs. You know, he lived off the back in the history and the legacy of guys like me, Chris, and Tommy, and all of them other guys, you know. But I stopped playing, and he been playing for, my brother been playing for a church for like 20, 30 years, you know. I, I was done do with it before these guys ever even knew what to do with it. I inspired guys like Chris to play these drums, right? Okay. Now, this is Chris Brooks. Well, Chris Brooks was auditioning for Puffy. Big moment in Chris' life. And Chris was a bad boy. Chris was a guy who came up after me and my guys. They, they learned from my school of drummers, right? When I speak, I speak thoroughbred real shit, you know, real talk. You know, everything is real, and people hate me for it. You know what I'm saying? Everything I ever talked was real. You know, people ain't no any and everybody going to be standing all around me, right? You got to be somebody that's about something, that's doing something, somebody because I inspire that out of people, right? So I taught my brother to the left of me how to play drums, right? He's still playing drums. I don't play drums no more, right? I'm going to tell you why I don't play drums anymore. I played drums for Oscar Hayes, the Clark Sisters, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, uh, uh, who else? Uh, Esther Smith. Now, these names don't mean nothing to y'all, but in the history of gospel music, all these people are legends. Uh, James Marks, right? Elder Boyd. You know what I'm saying? You know, all types of people that are instrumental and legendary to the Pentecostal movement in gospel music. Thomas Whitfield, right? Michael Fletcher, right? Oscar Hayes. I mean... Tony Booker, Kenneth Wilson, many people that I played for in gospel music, right? Now, how did I get into gospel music? My uncle first, but this ain't the first, how I got into gospel music, by the way, of my grandmother, remember, and my uncle Thomas Henry Gober, right? Not Thomas Whitfield. Everybody think I got into gospel music by the way of Thomas Whitfield, but it was through Thomas Henry Gober by joining the Pentecostal church and the Pentecostal movement. And I just happened to like music and end up playing the drums, right? And as I got older, I began to realize something that I didn't understand, something the lights came on. And the lights came on 
I'm gonna tell you what life Because I'm born again, praise the Lord. As I got older, I realized this guy was my uncle. This was my grandfather's son. Now, because I'm born again, praise the Lord. So we got right here, my uncle Tommy. God may be free from sin. Right, Tommy, who is here? Because I'm sanctified. Notice that's at the same place, you know. And I think I said that that at. The Fred Hammond event. This was at the same concert. This is back in the 80s. This is when they commissioned Thomas Whitfield. They was out here tearing gospel music up, right? Making history. Well, these guys right here in this photo right here is the descendants of those people. Chris, you know, uh, Willie, Terry, right? So... I would say sometime between 17, because I got married at 18, right? So as well, I'll say sometime around, I'll actually say around, around 15, to be honest with you. Somewhere between 15 and 22, I started getting influenced by the Hebrew Israelite movement. But I became a Pentecostal minister, licensed, ordained, um, a church musician, etc. cetera, and the third. But by the time I had got, I had got married at 18, so at 18, I moved out of my mother's house real young. So you got me, a little boy. Because I was, I was influenced by my other friend that was the same age as me. And he had everything that I, I, was, I had at 18. He had it 10 times over at 15. Right? So we wasn't afraid of getting out here trying to advance in this world. That stuff ain't fucking hard. Right? So it's all about making your man of people want to do what's right, you know. So I got a here. I am this Pentecostal minister. I'm an Israelite now too. I'm a rapper, right? I got like five, four rap albums rolling around. I'm a preacher in the church, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gospel musician playing for all of these gospel choirs. I mean, I'm out here. At, at that time, I was an early Israelite, had my own little ministry going. So I was at that age, I was out being a pioneer, laying down stuff. Right. To this day, a lot of rappers in Detroit are influenced by Terry. If it wasn't for cats like Terry, City G, Cheddar Boy Malik, right? There wouldn't be no Eminem, right? There wouldn't be no, uh, uh, there wouldn't be no, no, no Sada Baby. There wouldn't be no, no Faux Gang, Faux Two Doug, and, and, and none of that stuff wouldn't even happen because it was us to open up the door for that stuff, right? But what ended up happening, people, and this is why I want to talk about this. And this is why this is going to hurt. And this is why this is going to hurt. You know, because it's very sad and it's very real. When I became into the Israelite movement, this guy right here, this light-skinned guy that's holding his phone saying, peace, that's when he turned his back on me, right? Now, his daddy didn't teach him about God. I did. Right? His daddy wasn't there. Right? His daddy didn't teach him nothing about no goddamn music. I did. His daddy wasn't there. His daddy was in prison for murder. Right? His daddy got strung out on crack. Right? And he left my brother, this guy right to the left, without a daddy. He had to grow up all his, like, 10, 14, 13, 16. I think he got, when he got out, of, his daddy got out of jail, he might have been in his early, in his early or mid-20s or something, you know. So I taught this man these things, right? He still go to church to this day. He still play the drums for the church to this day. I taught him these things, right? Now, here I am, a preacher. He never, ever was a preacher. Couldn't even read, right? Because there was no daddy there to teach him. His daddy was the same as him. 
Your daddy was more less fortunate, actually. His daddy like dropped out in the sixth grade type shit, seventh grade type shit. Couldn't read. His daddy, I wish he was alive right now. God rest his soul, man. He taught me. He taught me all of the hells that he went through as a young man and told me things that he experienced as a young man that he should have never went through, the juke joints, all of that, right? So my brother, dad is in prison. When you got these single family parent raised female kids, right, me, my brother, I'm teaching my brother the ropes of this life. I mean, as a big brother, I defended him out here in these streets. I was the first guy, because I was out here in the streets first. I had, when I was 14, remind you, my friends had, I mean, we had all kinds of guns and stuff. You know, I mean, we was out here, we didn't know no better, we was kids, right? But my little brother, he might have, by that time, 13, 12, 13, 14, my brother might have been about seven, eight, right? You know, he saw this shit, and I was too ignorant, you know, I was trying to, just dumb. I didn't know this is why you don't let kids, this is why kids ain't supposed to do this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Kids supposed to be fucking kids, right? So I get saved. I throw away all of that. Now, when I get saved, my, my, my street niggas don't want nothing to do with me no more, right? So now I get saved. I, I start prospering and shit, right? I start playing for all these gospel groups. My rap album starting to grow off. I got my, I'm hosting Bill Out a Seven Mile TV show with Pirelli. You know what I'm saying? My boy Cheddar Boy Malik and them out here blowing up throughout the city. Them wipe out and them blading them had they thing going on. They out here smacking. Uh uh uh, rock bottom out here banging. I mean everything is going on fucking crazy, right? And I'm like right in the middle of this shit, right? And I got something that a whole bunch of other niggas don't get. A fucking five or six motherfucking albums already. Pioneer. We doing our thing, right? And I started getting influenced by this Israelite movement. And I started, you know, when by the time I had started making records, I had already been in the church. So I was gangsta rap was banging. And I was making like gospel raps and you know, positive raps. You know, I was more along the lines of a Nas, a KRS One, you know, a Rock Him. You know, I was along that line, right? You know, and I'm talking about songs about Jesus, but a Christian type guy. You know, I got all of that in, right? I'm making these little records floating around the CD. Plus, I got this hip hop thing going on, like mad crazy. You know, I can rap something crazy. And right, I meet my man Jermaine Harbin, right? Yak. Yak, 14, 15 years old. You know, I'm pushing this positive shit. And I teach little Yak how to produce, putting down on my little albums and shit, right? You know, I mean, Yak, Yak to this day fucked around and became a millionaire off of the shit I taught him. Yak right now is sick. Yak has been in a coma, comatose state for like a last year right now. Fucked up. Don't know whether he's coming or going. Well, last I saw Yak, Yak had big ass mansion, big furs, big rings, jumping up out of fucking, uh, uh, uh jumping up out of motherfucking uh, uh, Rolls Royces and shit, right? But see, I'm just gonna tell y'all something, man. So, I turned all of this shit down, right? Because what I'm learning in the Hebrew Israelite movement is that. This shit right here that I'm chasing don't mean nothing. It is all a part of the fucking distraction, right? So I throw all that shit away. I throw the Christian ministry away. I throw all of the legendary bloodline ties of the family business, which is music. I throw all that shit. I throw religion and music away, and I become a full-fledged Israelite, right? Now, I become an Israelite, right? I'm married, too, and I... Now, me and my wife become Israelites, right? My brother turned his back on me. You know, he tells me that that shit crazy that I'm talking about. Now, now he ain't even 20 years old yet. Mind you, he, grad he barely graduated from high school, LD. Can't even fucking read to this day, right? Now, I done learned how to read that Bible with a side out, learned how to speak Arabic from reading the Bible, learned how to speak Hebrew from reading the Bible, became a master historian, but just the same guy that sits up here and want to project to the world that the shit that I'm talking about ain't shit and it ain't worth nothing and it's bullshit, right? 
So we're going to decline on that car. Push that like, share, subscribe button, people. So I turned down. I'm playing for, I can show you some videos of me and Oscar Hayes and them on YouTube. Get down, right? I think it was the Bobby Jones show, was it? But anyway, uh, 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 some shit like that. One of them shows, uh, I don't, no, it wasn't the Bobby Jones. It was one of them shows of me and Oscar Newman. We had we had the tape. I got to find it. We we skinned it down. I was playing, oh, man, God, all right? I don't regret this stuff. I love them people. That was my history and my past. That made me who I am today. But see, when I stopped playing the drums for these gospel people, a lot of people got mad at me. When I became an Israelite, a lot of Christian people turned they a lot of my Christian friends turned their back on me. Yeah. My brother. Yeah. He gonna sit up there and tell me ain't no black, ain't no white man ever did nothing to me. Anything that was ever done wrong to me, a black man did. Ain't no white man did it, a black man did. How can you get a young boy? who graduated from LD to understand that what he is going through today, the money that a white man gave him today has absolutely nothing to do with the history and the evil and the wickedness that white people has done to black people before they gave you a dollar. And you know, my brother was the type of guy, and I don't believe in that black Hebrew stuff because uh, black people have always stole from me, always tried to get over on me, always tried to hit licks on me. I, mean, I work for the white man. My brother sat up there and... He would rather he 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 liked it, the white man because he was a hard worker. He worked for the garbage company. He would be jumping in the fucking trash with the maggots, dead bodies, germs, diseases, and that white man would pay him for it with no problem. Plus, my brother was the type of nigga that would crack the whip on other niggas. Man, push that fucking like, share, and the subscribe button, man. I ain't playing with y'all, right? All of this was because he didn't like this Israelite thing. Well, let's fast forward this shit on to the day, y'all. 30 something years done passed, right? And I got me a YouTube page going on, right? I in that time I didn't, you know, I didn't stop. I, I didn't I, I didn't learn how to be content with me, right? I, I learned that I didn't need 10, 5, 100, a million dollars to validate my manhood. I'm going to be a man whether I'm motherfucking broke or whether I'm rich, right? My brother don't believe that. He believes if you ain't got no money, you're not a man. And if you ain't got lots of money, you're not a man, right? He believe that. He really don't believe that because when Whitey press his ass for that dollar and he ain't got it, then he going to be sorry, right? But he only feel that way when it comes to me, right? It's really, really sad, people, right? So... All my life, my mother was raised handicapped, you know. Violence. Because my grandfather used to be my mom, my grandma. My grandma and my, and my grandma, two kids that was born in that time, Ricky and my mother was born physically and mentally fucked up. You know, all of them kids was born mentally fucked up because they was born in a dysfunctional family, right? And there was, you had generations of Men that was raised by women, which automatically make them bitch ass women men, unless they was taught by men, right? I was taught by great pastors, right? Whether they was Christians, whether they were Israelites, I was taught by Muslims. I was taught by gangsters. I was taught by, taught by thugs, yeah. And, and and it was all a respectful teaching and a protective teaching, right? I've made many people mad at me because I wanted to be an Israelite and nothing more, nothing less. Nothing more, nothing less, right? Now, as I become this Israelite, right, it gets to the point to where my mama don't want to hear me. She lose respect for me. You know, she, I, you turned down all of that for this shit? Right? 
Nigga, you was out here about to get it. And you turned that down for this bullshit. Right now, the Hebrew Israelite movement is the biggest, fastest, most powerful growing movement on the planet Earth to the day. Push that like, share, and subscribe button, people. Now, the problem is this, right? Now, I, I really spent the majority of my life just living as a regular human being. I didn't want to be this great big star, right? Only thing I ever wanted to do was be this Israelite teacher. And I went to end up going to colleges and universities, right? Remind you, remind you when I was a Christian and a thug and a dummy, then I graduated at the fourth bottom of one of the smartest schools in motherfucking the, Michigan. I went, yeah, I did graduate from a nerd school, but I graduated the fourth bottom with like, like a point four fucking grade point average. 12th grade, Martin Luther King High School, right? But it was, at, at, at that time, that's when I started getting into Christianity and I started taking music serious. And somehow, uh, 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 because of my study and belief in God and my moving in my belief, I ended up getting accepted into Knoxville College. I'm down there in Knoxville College, right? I'm going to show y'all something. Now, when I'm down in Knoxville College... This guy right here is my jazz That's piano professor. It's the last day to enroll to receive up to $300 per week in health benefits. Right? I don't know what happened, but the music stopped. Now, when I was 18 at Knoxville College, right? Now, y'all got to understand this, right? So y'all can get to see why this video is going to hurt people, right? Now, when I, was at seven, when I was 17 at Knoxville College, this guy right here was the fucking jazz instructor, right? This is Donald Bryan. He just recorded this album. I got a signed autographed copy of it around here somewhere. Me and Donald was hanging when he just dropped this album. Right? These are the types of people I fuck with all my life as a young man, right? Y'all don't believe me? Here go, here go Donald right here. Donald wasn't nobody to play with. Right. See down on the piano over there? Legend. These are my friends. The guy on the, that guy on the piano, that was my instructor. He taught me how to play the piano. He was responsible for these rap albums here. That's what in my cellars right there. Our right, Blakey, these legends, people. Put this fucking like. Share and subscribe button. Cause somebody's gonna get hurt from that. Here. In fact, I was playing. This was like nineteen eight or nineteen ninety. I was playing for Donald Brown. The year that Thomas Whitfield, my uncle, died first. Then I ended up entering into college. And Art Blakey came down there. He just sent for Art Blakey to Knoxville College. They did a concert. I met Art Blakey, right? That's, yeah, right? I met him. I ended up, Donald Brown ended up hooking us up with a gig where we end up, uh, me and the Knoxville uh, a college jazz band end up doing a gig at Alex Haley's house down in Tennessee. What? Yeah, right? So, a uh, young promising. I leave all of that, y'all, right? You know what I'm saying? And I start doing rap music and start acting. I should just show some clips before in some of this stuff so y'all can see I'm not playing. Started acting and things just started moving, right? But what ended up happening was that I, I no longer believed in the Christianity anymore, right? And I started to grow in the Israelite movement, but by it being new and the type of movement that it was, a lot of people didn't like it. But it was just a real grim reality that people had to deal with, right? 
because I wasn't about to change just what I believe, and that's just what it's going to be, right? So it was just like how the Nation of Islam was back in the 60s. There was a lot of Christians and people who hated that stuff and didn't like it. And that's just what I was dealing with. And my brother happened to be one of them. So the Israelite movement, I began to grow in it. And the Lord began to, just like I was in the music world, I was starting to grow in the Israelite world, right? But as the more I began to grow in the Israelite world, the, the, the more the people in the real world hated me. My brother, my sister, them more than anybody, my wife. I ended up losing my marriage, my real respect to my family because I joined the Hebrew Israelite movement, right? But now that I'm in the Hebrew Israelite movement, right, I go back to college, right? I'm on the dean's list. I'm in the honor roll, right? Uh... I never really have to ever really work hard for money. I own property. The devil has tried to take it away from me a million times. Never could, right? Uh, 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 I just, just, just secured and blessed, right? But these blessings didn't come in the way that the other people should see these blessings. The Lord blessed me with a house, a little raggedy shack that I've been owning about damn near 20 years. It ain't much. Raggedy. It's very raggedy now because I ain't been able to live in it in the last two years, people. Push the like, share, subscribe button. Now, I ain't been able to live there because about two years ago, my mother caught a stroke, right? And for about the last 10, about the last 10 or 12 years, I've been out here working at a job every day. My uncle, my cousin James Riley hooked me up with a job. We were working for the auto industry, and this job was, I hate to say it, it was a it was a bullshit job, but they wasn't afraid to work the shit out of you for that. If you wasn't afraid to work, they would send you home. I was making $9 an hour, and they worked the fuck out of me. I'm bringing home $900, $1,000 a week at $9 an hour. They working me 70, 80 hours a motherfucking week, and they did it for years, all the way up until I was making $16, $17 an hour, and I'm making more money than I ever made in my motherfucking life, right? But because I worked the type of job that I work, you know, they work with you 80 hours a week, which means that you were just able to make money. So I was never able to really get my car, get ahead to fix my house, because I was always working. And, you know, I mean, shit, it got to the point to where I started blowing money on shit that I shouldn't have been in. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to enjoy some of this. I mean, I just can't keep working slaving with no enjoyment or fulfillment of man, a piece of man, you know, no wealth, no shalom. I can't do that. Right? So, anyway, my mother ended up getting sick, right? My mother ended up catching a stroke, right? My mother... Mind you, I told you she was born handicapped, right? So I've always had to look after my mother. Always. Always. Her oldest born, this, that, right? But I was always different from them because when I was out in the streets and my mother saw me with guns and running with the dope man, my mother beat the dog shit out of me, put me on punishments, beat me with brooms, stenching cords. She didn't do that to my brother and sister. My sister ended up having babies by one of the biggest drug dealers in the city of Detroit. My brother ended up falling in love with his family members on his daddy's side that was all street people. There was nothing but street drug dealers, killers, murderers, and things like that, right? You know, they them people wasn't they wasn't they wasn't even big, they was big and it was in danger. They wasn't big they were big and threatened harm and gang shit. They wasn't big and buying properties and, 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 and doing shit to pull us up out of the fucking a, a, a financial degradation that we in. They wasn't none of they wasn't even nothing like that. In fact, they was more so part of the problem of us being in it. You know, people that was always in and out of the penitentiary and shit, right? So I stopped doing this rap shit, right? Stop doing this gospel shit. And I start taking this Israelite shit by the horns. And I start advancing and I start getting further and further away from the things that people like. I didn't want to celebrate Christmas. Uh, I changed my name. 
uh, I mean, just things begin to progress, and I be wanting to show these people that I'm moving in this direction. And the more I moved in that re- direction, the more resentment that I've gotten from this guy on the fucking left of me, right? When I was in college, I wanted, I was reading books like John Henry Clark and Shake into D. Do y'all know who the fuck these people is, people? Right? Ivan Van Sertema, John Henry Clark, and Yosef Ben Yakan, and, you know, and George M. James, you know? And these guys inspired me so that I decided to go back to college. And I go back to college, and I'm on the dean's list now. I'm on the honor roll now. You know what I'm saying? I'm on a, a fucking uh, 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 honor society. I'm in an honor society. I see my name in places that I never imagined that they could be in. Right? My brother looking at me like I turned my back on Jesus. And he hates me. Jealous of it. Envy of it. He feel like that I would I chose the wrong path because I'd have been better off playing those drums for... Michael Fletcher, Oscar Hayes, and uh, uh, LaQuint Weaver, and, and and Hezekiah Walker, and the Clark sisters, and Fred Hammond. Yeah. What my brother failed to realize is that even when I was doing all of these things, right? Even when I was doing all of these things, My brother failed fail to realize all of the fags and homosexuals that was leading and dominating gospel music, right? And wonder why certain... I, I could have easily got in those clicks if I would have let people know that Tommy was my uncle, but I didn't want to live off my uncle name. I was talented enough to make it through them doors without my uncle, and I did. You know what I'm saying? Not once when I was in the game that I used to live off my uncle name. I got off of my own talent. I made sure I begged people that knew that Tommy was my uncle not to tell people, including Oscar, and he did. Right? And Oscar was Tommy right here, man. Right? Because I didn't want to get on off my uncle now. I didn't want to be what they call a, a guy that was a part of nepotism, a guy who made his success because Thomas Whitfield was his uncle. I made it off my own sweat and bro. Every talent, every gospel gig I ever did was all off my own sweat and back. And by people not knowing that I was Tommy Nephew, I came into the game another way. I didn't come into the game with the protection of Thomas Whitfield, right? Which means that if I if I came into the game under the protection of Thomas Whitfield, a lot of the wickedness and the crazy shit I saw, I wouldn't have saw it because the people would have they would have did they would have kept that out of my sight, right? But by them thinking that I was just a regular drummer ass nigga that just made it here by the skin of his good talent, right? They was there was shit that they would do in front of me that even some manipulative shit because a lot of you know, I've had them say gay shit to me. Thinking that I'm gonna jump to do this shit just to play drums for you. Or to be in your motherfucking click. Right? Man, I end up quitting that shit, man. Niggas, the uh, gospel singer sleeping with my wife, destroying my family. Push the like, share, and fucking subscribe. Eventually, I threw all that Christian shit away, right? All of it became a full-fledged Israelite. My brother hate me, and hate me, and hate me, right? He threw away all these movies, all these rap albums, all these videos, all the hip-hop plugs, all the motherfucking street gangster plugs. You threw all that shit away for Israel. That bullshit. Now my mama becomes sick, right? All during this time, my mother is handicapped, high blood pressure, constantly getting fucking... uh, I was going to call it osteosclerosis, where they constantly digging in your groins and your arteries and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you your arteries clogged up because you like to smoke, drink, 
eat foul, fucked up foods, never exercise, never do shit to cleanse yourself. Just take, just live in that sad, I mean, sad, like standard American diet. Diet, you know what I'm saying? You know, the SAD, standard American, you know. And it's sad because it kills people. Soul food been killing people, Negroes, ever since they've been here. You know, but my mother loved that stuff. And, and she, would, she wouldn't listen to me. She would never give up her pork. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. My mama, my mama, my mama ate this. My grandma, my great-grandma ate mm-mm. I'm not doing it. You know, she didn't want to do that. So I, as an Israelite, she know that everybody know, my brother, my sister, all, I taught them all of this, that we the children of Israel, we ain't supposed to eat pork. We need to do this. We need to do that. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do that. These things right here. Okay, you could do this. The white man said don't do this, but these things ain't going to kill you like this is. The white man said you could do this, and this going to put you in your grave. I don't want to listen to nothing you guys say. Uh, you don't respect Jesus. You don't respect God. You turned your back on the church. You don't know that. The fuck? Now, the pastor of the church that, 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 that these guys playing for, trying to sleep with a girl <laughs> that was my girlfriend that I met from the fucking church, kissing her in the mouth and shit while his wife in the fucking audience. I told y'all some people about to get motherfucking hurt right now. But this nigga mad at me because out of all that, he in there fucking sleeping with every bitch in the church, right? Going in that bitch drunk, high. You know what I'm saying? In, out, fresh out of jail. No repentance. No, I'm sorry. You know, none of that. I wasn't raised like that. I was raised in the Pentecostal church. You had to explain why you in and out of jail and you want to play drums over here. Yeah, at Trinity, they was cut like that. If you didn't have the Holy Ghost, they didn't want to be, you can't play these instruments. But them Baptist people, no, they all they care was that was Thomas Whitfield nephew. Come over there drunk, you know what I'm saying, sleeping with all the women in the church, ain't marrying none of them, going from one woman to the next. Ain't nobody saying nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? They loving it. This is what keeps him there. You know, he feel like I'm a fool because he get to get all the pussy in the church, get the money, and the past he got in trouble, the preacher going to come to do his family funeral. All this old dumb shit, right? That don't mount up to a motherfucking bag of beans. You can get your own pussy outside the church, nigga. You can get better pussy in the fucking in the strip club, nigga. What the fuck kind of game you playing with me, nigga? Stop it. You get much better women in the motherfucking house of Israel. Man, stop it. Uh, I guess off into the alpha male thing, and I learned masculinity. Yes, I learned masculinity because there wasn't no man there. I had to learn how to be a man. I wasn't born a fucking man. My brother got a real problem with me. Now my mother gets sick. My brother and sister turn their back on my mama, Right? It's supposed to be all three of us pitch in and take care of my mama because now she's bedridden. Because all of the years as an Israelite, I told my mama, you ain't supposed to be eating this. Mama, if you take this herb and this concoction, it'll clean your arteries. She didn't want to listen to me. She told me, shut the fuck up, constantly disrespect me, teach her kids how to disrespect me. You know, it gets to the point to where her arteries is clogged up, keep clogging up. You know, so she has end up having this massive fucking stroke, right? I said my Israelite women is better. I had an Israelite girlfriend come all the way from Indiana, give my mama a concoction to clean her arteries all the way out. My mama refused to take it. You know, the, y'all know the fucking, the, the, the apple cider liner, vinegar concoction. Come on, stop it. All right? Shit works. My mama didn't want that. We're looking at us like we crazy, like we some kind of fucking cult. Here we is today, 2023, and the Black Hebrew Israelite movement is the biggest, fastest growing movement on the planet. I got my own Israelite channel. I am one of the most powerful and formidable Israelites on the planet. And my brother hates me for it because he feels like that. Now, the sad part about it is my mother gets sick. Now, I, now I give up my job, right? The greatest job I ever had in my life kept me with thousands every fucking week. I made at least 50000 At least. If I went to work every day, I'd have made about seventy, eighty, right? Okay, now I had to quit my job because I had to choose, fuck it, I, my mama needs somebody to take care of her, either she's going to have to go to the nursing home and I'm going to keep going out here living my life, right? 
I say, fuck that. I can't get another mama. So I'm fixing to quit my job. And I'm finna go take care of my mom. Because the, the people from the hospital call up, call me them at my job. I'm the oldest, so they want to know what they need to do with my mama. So I say, fuck that. I'm going to quit my job, and I'm going to take care of my mom. For a year and a half, I worked at my mama's house, wiping ass, right? This woman is incontinent, wiping ass, cleaning pissy diapers, right? She's incontinent, so she don't know when she got to use the bathroom, which means that you possibly got to change her like every two, three hours on it. So if if it's 24 hours in a day, you have to change her 10. You have to change her from uh, anywhere from 9 to 13 times. And that's in a 24-hour period. Right. It's a constant. Then you got to cook for her. Uh, if you don't go in there and check on her like that, she's going to wet the bed, the sheet, all of this. And you got to take care of this. Right? So now, I, I they felt like, well, my, I used to be a nurse aide when I was married, right? And they felt like, well, since you used to, I ain't did that shit in over 30 years. They feel like because I'll ever wipe anybody else's ass, I should wipe my mama ass. Nigga, we all should wipe my mama ass, nigga. What I did with my life, nigga. If I suck dick, nigga, I shouldn't suck dick for your mama. Fuck wrong with you, nigga. I'm just saying. Whatever the fuck I had to do to degrading, I shouldn't have to do that for nobody but motherfucking me, man. If you want to look at it as degrading. I was a healthcare worker. But these clown-ass motherfuckers want to look at healthcare as degrading. Because you have to care for people who can't care for themselves. And they look at you as degrading. They don't respect you for that. Push the like, share, and fucking subscribe, people. So in the event, I'm over there taking care of my mother for a year and a half. No job. My brother run around here balling, buying campers, mobile homes. Nigga own like five, six cars. He got his little business going, right? You know, he out here using people, taking advantage of people, got people working for him, family members not paying them and shit, right? Yeah, the same shit he was doing to me. So I left his ass and started working for the white man. And that's when I got the businesses and the car and the houses, Right? Man, push that like, share, and motherfucker, subscribe. So really and truthfully, I'm losing respect for this man because you feel like that you got a plug on life where the white man has anointed you with a job, a business, and a position, and you feel like your job is to oppress other black people. You know, how these people working $10,000 worth of work and only giving their ass $600 for it. That's the game you want to play with grown-ass black men. Have people working for weeks and weeks and weeks and not giving them no fucking money. All right? That's what you do to people, man. To my brother. Because white Jesus, now he don't even believe in God anymore, right? He'll tell God, he'll see his here. My brother will sit up there and tell you, fuck God, nigga, I don't believe in none of that shit, nigga. So now it becomes not that I'm an Israelite, this bullshit, that the whole belief and practice of God is bullshit. Well, he need to, the pastor of his church need to know about this. The pastor of Christ Cathedral Baptist Church need to know that you got a man that's on your motherfucker, that's playing the drums for gospel music in your church that don't believe in God, that will say, fuck God. You don't believe me? Stop paying that motherfucker that $50, $75 you give him every Sunday. And I bet you he'll show you fuck God. That man ain't doing this shit for no fucking God. He said, fuck God. And that's why he says, fuck me. Now, the reality is this, right? My brother, I'm over there taking care of my moms. I'm giving, I'm going through hell. I ain't got nothing. I'm about to lose my house. I done lost my job. I'm about to, I ain't got nothing. I done, I done wore out on this year and a half. Every clothing I had, I done wore these bitches out. My sister got a job. My brother got a job. My brother, I'm not bothering him. I'm not asking him to do anything. He got his own house. He's doing his own life. You got my sister. She lives with my mother, and she wants to continue with her own life as if though my mother never got sick. She don't want to care for my mother. She don't want to change no diapers, but she want to live in my mother's house. Uh, 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 don't want to pay no bills, right? 
she wanted to get up, go to work, and just act as if though nothing was wrong with my motherfucking mom. That I'm supposed to stop doing everything I do and go over there and take care of my mama when my mama over there uh, uh, got this bitch living in her motherfucking house, right? Ain't paying for nothing. And the only thing she over there good for is to stand over me and to watch me and to make sure I do a well enough job so she ain't got to do it. Push this like, share, and motherfucker subscribe, right? Now, they made me lose everything I got, right? They think that they got me. They don't even know I'm in a protective program to where these bitches can't fuck with me. Even if they burn my shit down, bitch, I'm going to get paid. Right? These people in such hatred with me, they thought that I lost everything. They thought I lost my home. They thought I lost everything. So now they got me in a position where I got to, de- I got to wipe ass now to depend on my mama and shut the fuck up, do it, nigga, you know, this, that. Blah, 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 blah. Push this like, share, and motherfucking subscribe button, man. Right? So my brother, I tell my brother, man, my sister ain't helping my mama, man. I said, Moo, I gave up my job. I got a house to live in. And I ain't lived in my house in over a year. And I own my own home. Right? I haven't been in my home. I haven't lived my life that I've been normally living for the last 10, 15 years. I haven't lived that life for the last year and a half, man. Because I gave up everything for mama to take care of her. You know? That type of thing. You know? This nigga tells me, well, didn't that winter, a couple winters ago, the pipe in your house busted and you had to go over my mama's house to use her shower? Right? I say, yeah. He said, well, you depended on my mama and you lived off my mama, so it's you got to take care of my mama. I say, what about my sister in there that's living off my Fuck her. I ain't got nothing to do with her. I can't make her do nothing. But my brother feels, though, that he can't make my sister do anything. And he can't make himself do anything, but he's swelping down and he can make me do it, right? I love my mama. Push that like, share, and fucking subscribe. My brother get drunk. I tell my brother I can't do it no more because my sister living in the house for free. Well, it was it was like five, it was like eight degrees below last week in the house, right? And my sister turned all the heat off to like 70 something degrees, like 70 degrees, right? And then she turned, raised up all the windows in the motherfucker house because, because she can't have no heat. Anything past 70 degrees, she started throwing up and she, her body just started breaking. I don't know what the fuck going on. With her. But she feels though in the wintertime that she can freeze everybody in the motherfucking house, right? When she the worthless motherfucker in there, she ain't doing nothing. She, my sister, picture bitch, with my mama, for a glass of motherfucking water, right? Right. My sister picture bitch with my mama. My mama asked her for a glass of water. My sister picture bitch on. So I had to come, fifteen miles away to get my mama some motherfucking water because my mama in that house lights, gas, and everything. Taking care of everything, everybody. And she want to pitch a bitch because she don't want to, she want to live off my mama, right? But she don't want to take care of my mama. She don't want to give my mama no water. She don't want to change her diapers. She don't want to cook for her. She want to continue. At 50 years old, my sister never went to the club. My sister, since my mama been sick, she go to the club three, four times a week. You know what I'm saying? She out partying, getting more drunker now than ever. You know, she's just doing these things to stay busy so my mama won't be able to ask her to do anything, right? So I tell my brother that my sister is causing a problem over here, right? My sister is being very disrespectful, right? I had went and bought tissue because she was this bitch so trifling she won't even buy no tissue to wipe her ass. And I will go buy rolls of tissue, and then when I go in the bathroom, I can't wipe my ass because she take my tissue in her motherfucking room. So I asked her, can I have my tissue, right? This bitch picture bitch because she got a problem with me asking for my shit. This is the disrespect that I got to deal with to take care of my mom over there. My sister, she she is three people in that house, my mother, me. And, and me and my mother, actually it would be two diets, right? 
But because I don't eat pork and all this bullshit that my mom and sister eat, right, there, you know, there's three diets because even though my mom and sister got the same diet, my sister's so fucking angry that she don't want to care for my mama. She wants to keep living a life as if there ain't nothing happened to my mother. And, and everybody want to put everything on fucking me. And I don't have a problem with that because I feel like, fuck it, I'll take care of you, mama. You know, but the thing about it is that, that, that this woman can't be keep living in your house. And she refused to give you any type of care. You know what I'm saying? And, the, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to take care of you when you got people in your house that you're taking care of and refuse to care for you. You're not taking care of me. You're not doing a motherfucking thing for me. I'm giving up shit for you. All right? And if you want me to continue to care for you, you're going to have to put this woman out. Because she has constantly shown disrespect for you, mama. She's shown that she don't give a fuck how sick you is. In fact, my sister has went as far as told my mama she finna take her and put her in the nursing home. Now, the sad part about it is my sister does that because her dumb, ignorant self thinks that once my mother goes to the nursing home, that she is going to live in my mother's house. But my mother lives in a government-subsidized home, which means that the minute my mother goes to the nursing home, the government stops paying, and my sister is fucking homeless. She is trying to get my get my sister is trying to get rid of my mother so she can live at my mother's home without my mother, you know what I'm saying? Because my mother is a burden to her. Right? Now my mother is not a burden to me, but what is a burden to me is that the wicked shit that my sister does, my mother protects her. And it's all off of my back. You know, my sister the type of person that she don't want you touching anything that belonged to her. And I mean, it, it can be my mother can tell me, uh, get me a, 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 some water out the refrigerator. My sister, well, I, I would strategically put the water in a place where I ain't got to touch none of her stuff. My sister would strategically undo what I do, put something that my mother won't behind her stuff, which caused me to have to move her stuff out the way. Oh, you left my water on the fucking counter? I told you not to touch my stuff. She pitch a bitch when you touch her stuff, man. I'm talking about she she get this big thing, this big kick out of walking up to grown ass men, holding them, be rating them, and checking. Right? I'm like, man, I can't live like this, man. I'm giving up everything for my mama. And I should I should be honored, respected, right? I should be giving, y'all should be coming through here looking out for me, right? Y'all should be doing all these things, right? They don't do these things, right? It's, 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 a, it's well, between my brother and mother and sister, it's pretty much you owe me, and if you can't take care of me, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Sad thing about it, mama, ain't nobody in line to take care of mama. My brother came over there and pretty much told me that, pretty much expressed to me, nigga, you owe my mama. I don't owe my mama a motherfucking thing. Because my mama, I told my mama, mama, that stuff you're doing is killing you. You got to stop. You know, you got to stop, man. How you going to sit up there and eat them greasy-ass pork chops and, and, and drink you 240, 340s every day, two packs of motherfucking cigarettes, and you on 15 fucking pills? Why are you doing this, mama? Stop it. But she wouldn't, and she caught a stroke, and now I have to take care of her. I have to give up everything I got to be able to make $600 a motherfucking week. I mean, a month. $600 a month. And now this $600 motherfucking dollars... I get, I get 300 and my sister get the other 200 and something. It ain't like five something, almost six. And my sister got a job. I'm doing all the fucking work. She ain't gave up nothing, right? So I got to live off $300 a month for the next year and a half. My brother don't give a fuck about me. You just stay there and take care of my mama, nigga. When, when my mama need, when, when you need, when my mama needed, when you needed my mama, she was there for you. But the truth of the matter, my mama wasn't really never there for me like that, like that, like that. You know, any anytime my mama ever did something for me, like if I went to jail or whatnot, I gave my mama her money back. If she, if she paid a thousand dollars to get me out, I gave a thousand dollars back to get, give her, you know, whatever, right? She never really, my mother never went under. My brother then went to jail, owed my mother two, three thousand dollars, never paid her, have her put her property up, just that, never gave her her money. Just all kind of wicked shit. My brother then sat up there and had me work for him. You know what I'm saying? Didn't pay me my money. When I come over there, he got a brand new car, but he ain't got my motherfucking money. You know, just a whole bunch of years of disrespect because he think that because I, he think that, he think that, 
all of that shit about me being on the honor roll, honor society, this and that. You ain't got you 20,000. You ain't got 50,000. You ain't got this, so you ain't shit. And because you believe in that bullshit and this and that, he got a real problem with that. Well, eventually what ended up happening is that he, he, his disrespect for me became so low, you know, to where he came over there telling me what I better and better not do when it concerned my mama when I'm the one that's there 24-7 and he only come there one day out the fucking month. So basically, bitch, you come here just to patrol on me like you my motherfucking slave driver, like you come to check on shit. You ain't come to contribute to this motherfucking situation, bitch-ass nigga. You didn't. I told y'all motherfuckers about to get hurt. I begged my mama. I said, mama, I'm going to have to leave you. You're going to have to go to nursing home, mama, because your daughter and your son is constantly disrespecting me. My sister, I go buy food. My sister go throw my food in the garbage. I go spend $13 for fucking coconut oil. My sister go throw it on the fucking floor. You know, she shouldn't even have to, she didn't even have to touch it. This morning, I wake up. After, after I confront her about stealing my fucking toilet paper and ask her not to touch my stuff because you act so nasty when somebody look at your shit, please just don't touch my stuff. I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. She goes in the refrigerator, open up my lemonade, right? She opens up my fucking lemonade, put her nasty dick-sucking ass, no teeth brushing ass mouth on my bottle. Big-ass bottle like a two-liter. Just drinking out the fucking bottle. Damn, can you even just put it in a cup? I don't even have a problem with you even going in my stuff. I don't even have a, I don't even fight over food. But I fight over food when, when you sit up there and feel like you're going to use that shit to be able to say something to me, bitch. Like I'm some kind of broke, bum-ass nigga. Not knowing that I'm getting paid out here. Right? So, me and my brother gets into a fight. He blacks my ass. He damn near breaks my nose. He chokes me out. He damn near gives me a concussion. He pulls out. He just got to the left of me. He pulls out a gun on me, get to shooting at me. And I bust him up. He throws a bottle at me, wine, liquor bottles. And I'm not supposed to bust him upside his motherfucking head. I bust that motherfucker upside his motherfucking head with a motherfucking metal ass pipe. That bitch broke in half five times. I hit that. I had that bust him upside his head 20 times with that bitch. I done beat him with two by four, damn it, stabbed me, all kind of shit. To let him know that, man, I will fuck you up when it comes to you thinking you could put your hands on me, man. My brother's stronger than me, right? Bigger than me, younger. And he thinks that life is about, because he got some kind of animosity with me, he feels like that it's his job to dominate me as a motherfucking man. Him and my sister, right? So, all I ever wanted to do was care for my mama, man. That's all I ever wanted to do. And y'all didn't. Bitch, you wasn't over there, moot. That guy to the left of me, that bitch ass nigga wasn't never over there. He come over there one Sunday out the month. And the way it's set up is now we got a little organization going on. Me and my sister, I work Monday through Friday, right? And my sister work the weekend. So if I'm over there, those are my off days. When my brother come over there, he see he don't he don't give a fuck about my off day. He feel like that. Oh, when I'm over here, bitch, get back to motherfucking work. He feel like that when he over there, if my mama diaper need to be washed, I need to wipe her ass. Now my sister is a woman. Why do you feel, man? that I'm supposed to be washing my mama's ass, digging in and wiping inside her vagina, when she got a daughter that don't give a fuck about her right next door to her. Well, she ain't going to do it. She refused to do it. So, but you feel like you're going to make me do it? You ain't even got to make me do it. I do it anyway. But what it is is I'm not bowing to you and kissing your ass. My brother, we got into a fight. My brother didn't black my fucking ass behind this. I got to get black ass, right? I got to deal with mounds of disrespect, right? 
all of this in order to save my mama. But this is what it is, right? If I continue to go over there and take care of my mother, right, then I have to become less than a man to take care of my mama. I have to deal with so much motherfucking, because my mother refused to, my brother don't live with her. All she got to do is just keep him the fuck off from over there. My sister ain't doing nothing. All she got to do is just put her ass out, right? If you want me to do this, why do you want me to give up everything and you got somebody in your house that refused to do nothing? And you want to take care of her. You keep, wanna, you keep wanting to protect her. And she don't give a fuck about you. And I have to sit up here and do everything while this bitch sit up here and do nothing. Go out to the clubs, right? Get people killed. Man, let me stop, man. Bruh. Get people put in the hospital. Get people locked up. All because y'all, there's nothing, people. Don't ever think that you can dominate another fucking man. The worst thing a motherfucker can do is if we in a place and there's a piece of paper on the floor, you don't tell me to pick it up when it's easier for you to pick it up your motherfucking self, bitch. What type of game you playing with me? Very disrespectful. I never did nothing to my brother. My brother pulled a gun out on me, shot at me. Right. He did. My mother and them begged me to drop the charges. Right. Now I dropped the charges. And he's on probation. He running from probation. He running from this and that. I didn't know these things. They called the house. And they asked the probation officer. I didn't know who the fuck he was. They asked him for a Willie Whitfield. I speak to a Willie Whitfield. I said, Willie Whitfield don't live here. And I said, man, who's calling. He said, it's the probation officer. I said, oh. Oh, I said, okay, okay, okay. I said, yeah, he, I don't know what the deal is on that. I will stay here. My sister stays here, but she's not here at the moment. When she comes, I'll have her to call you. She'll be able to call him, and she'll be able to connect you up with him. Okay? Now, I work for my mother, right? I don't know what the fuck her and her relationship and her son and whether he trying to slick or run off on the government. I don't know anything. You ain't supposed to tell them nothing. You ain't supposed to tell them nothing. You ain't supposed to, you, you, you don't even never answer that phone. You know, and he want to fight me. He want to disrespect me. And I'm like, brother, all you got to do is just call these people, man, and tell them my brother don't live there. He's my mother's caretaker. And he's there during the hours when I'm not there. So he don't really know my business. He, he called me. He got in contact with me. Here I am. What you need to know. Oh, I'm about to go to jail 25 years. Now, mind you, he about to go to jail for 25 years because he got caught with a gun because I called the police on him because he chasing me out the house butt-ass naked with a fucking gun shooting at me. I dropped the charges. I guess he ain't telling nobody what to do. So now he got to count for that gun they caught him with. But my nephew, and he told my nephew, my nephew told me that, that everything is good, right? But everything ain't good because he's lying. Push this fucking like, share, and subscribe. Now he wants to accuse me, right, for being the reason why he about to face 25 years in penitentiary. But if he was respectful, right, not coming over to my mama's house drunk, starting shit that ain't even got nothing to do with you, right? You chose the wrong motherfucking route than the right route. You choosing the satanic route over the godly intelligent route. You choose the dumb satanic route that ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work trying to motherfucker command deer and dog a uh, uh, motherfucker dominate me, bitch. That ain't gonna work. I'd rather be dead in my motherfucking grave before I let any bitch nigga out here in the free world dominate motherfucking me. I'm the one that has the intellect and the wisdom, right? And my mother don't want to go to the nursing home, right? So I'm trying to make it to where I'll just take care of you, you know? 
my brother wants to stress my mother, how she, he going to beat the fuck out of me when he see me, and how he going to do this, and I'm a bitch-ass nigga, and I'm a bum. This nigga done lost three houses. Nigga, I've been on the last house I owned 20 years. I got a thousand dollars in my pocket right now. I don't know what he got. Right? And I ain't even got no job. But I'm this I'm always this bum. I always gotta live up to his validation. I say, look, man, I'm fearing for my life, right? Because I'm 50 years old, y'all. And I'm not, I'm tired of fighting people, putting my hands, you know. I'm not in physical shape to be out here fighting with people. If I would have thought that I was going to be going through this with this man, I didn't want to break my mama's heart, right? And I didn't want to press charges and hurt my mama's feelings, no more than what I did when I damn near killed her son and her son damn near killed me in her house. My brother damn near killed me. I went through all of that about how I was raised and what I went through to show y'all that I don't want to repeat this shit again. And I've constantly told my mother that she's going to have to do, if she want me to continue to care for her, she's going to have to do something about her children. Okay, when it, I, I can't come over there and keep caring for you and happen to go through all of this barrage of disrespect just to keep you out of the nursing home. I'm only making $2 an hour. There's people who are making $20, $30 an hour to do this shit. What I do, it takes nine people in the nursing home to do. I got to cook for you, clean for you, take out diapers, wash, go shopping errands and this and that. And this shit is overwhelming for me. And the little bit of help that you motherfuckers do, nigga, really don't even amass to nothing. And, and I got to take my sister's at shit and my brother's shit on top of it. I'm willing to go through all of that for my mama except for the taking of her kids' shit. I'm not going to give up my manhood and my respect and my dignity as a man, right? It's to the point to where if these people disrespect me, it can get physical. It's going to be met with immediate fucking violence, right? My brother thinks that because he can physically dominate me and that he carries all types of guns and shit that I'm supposed to be afraid of that. And I am because I don't want to go through that type of shit in my life. And I know that he's the type of nigga that's going to bring it. So what I'm going to do, family and friends, right? What I am going to do is that I'm going to fall back from social media for a while, right? To shit calm down in my personal life. I need to go out here and get a job. I quit working for my mother. I relinquish the care and that family because I begged my mother to do something about it, to do something about it, and she refused to do anything about it, right? And it has gotten to the point to where I'm fearing for my safety. It's to the point to where if somebody disrespect me, I'm afraid that I'm going to do something that's going to end up having somebody in the hospital and somebody else in the penitentiary. Right. And so pretty much before it gets to that point, I am going to leave my mother. I no longer am my mother's caretaker. I am. I told my mother that she, she's not, she won't allow me to take her and drop her off at the nursing home. So I'm walking away from the situation. Because what I refuse to do is, is constantly be fighting to take care of my mama and happen to go through all these demons in hell just to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not getting nothing out of it. That's the sad part. I'm losing. Basically, I'm supposed to throw my life away and f I'm supposed to fight to throw my life away for my mama. And, 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 and my manhood, my, my physical wealth, my spirituality... I'm supposed to throw all of that away just to go over there and cook clean and wipe my mama's ass. While, and, to, and to endure the great uh, emasculation between her children. Y'all got me fucked up. I, I quit, mama. I love you. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. It's over with. I don't care what happened at this point. I can't care. I cannot allow my mother's heathenism and paganism 
in the way she raised my brothers and sisters for their hatred for God in Israel, right? We 50 fucking years old. I don't owe y'all nothing. I can leave easily. I got my own house. I'm at my own house now, y'all. I got my own home. I don't need them for nothing. They try to make me like I need to be there, and I don't. They need me. That's the gaslighting and, 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 and deception that they fucking last that they over there trying to pull. Like they don't fucking need me. Y'all the motherfucking life who ain't stopped. Well, y'all life gonna stop now because somebody gonna either have to come take care of my mama or somebody gonna put, I'm out of the situation. Y'all, somebody gonna have to stop something. Somebody gonna have to come over there and take care of her. Somebody gonna have to go take, put her in a nursing home. Somebody gonna have to do something. You know, and that just wasn't gonna be. So I no longer am the caretaker for Stephanie Whitfield. I'm done because I am afraid for my life. I'm afraid that I am not man enough to sit up there and deal with motherfuckers who bent over trying to emasculate me and disrespect me. I'm not man enough to deal with that because when that happens, a real man is supposed to motherfucking lead. And that's what I did. And now that I left, all of the shit is about to hit the motherfucking fan, y'all. And I pray that I don't shoot nobody, right? Motherfuckers got to respect me because they need to stop acting like I won't push that motherfucking button. They they better act like I won't. They better stop acting like I won't pull that back. Man, these niggas know why I push that motherfucking blade. You need to stop acting like that. I tell you what, I'm done with the Whitfield family. Larry, I love you, my nigga. I ain't done with you. I'm talking about your grandfather's other half children. I'm done fucking with all of them. The ones that ain't dead, the ones that's living, I'm done fucking with. You know what I'm saying? Just let them live their life, right? I don't need them. They don't need me. Get the fuck on. Right? Because in order to deal with you, if I got to put I got to throw my man, I, to throw my man, I tell you, I'm not throwing my manhood away. I'll die and go to hell first, which means that I can end up going to the penitentiary and don't even get killed. Man, I'm not finna play these games with people. Don't disrespect me, man. You disrespect me, fuck you, yeah. all right? I ain't got nothing else to do with you. A man, I'm not tolerating no forms of disrespect. I don't need you, you don't need me. Don't call me, I don't call you. Fuck you, right? Don't cross my path with that disrespectful bitch shit. So the only way that I can secure that this nigga's not going to get drunk and disrespect me is to just keep myself away from him, which means that I can't have nothing to do with my brother, I can't have nothing to do with my sister, and I can't have nothing to do with my mother because they're finna, they finna go off into, she's finna go off into their care. So I denounce the Whitfield family. I'm been Israel, bitch. And that's what I'm going to live and die for. And if y'all don't respect me, fuck you. I pray that you don't ever disrespect me to my motherfucking face because I will push that motherfucking blade, bitch. If not, blow your motherfucking brains out. Don't disrespect me, bitch. It's Israel forever. And fuck anybody who got a problem with it. Family and all.